Yo, what is up guys? Thank you for tuning in to yet another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down my top five winter pond baits. I'm gonna be showing you guys where to throw them, how to throw them, and be giving you guys a few helpful tips along the way, so stay tuned. It's gonna be an interesting one. All right, so before we get into the video, I just wanna level with you guys real quick. So as some of you may know from watching past videos, uh, Dylan and I have a little boat that we, a little boat, that we goon around in and we film out of and catch fish. Well, lately that boat hasn't been to its full capacity. Uh, it's been bogged down really bad, it doesn't run full speed. Um, I've messed around with it forever trying to figure out what's going on and I just can't pinpoint the problem. So I finally said enough and I took it into the shop. So I'm just kind of stuck here, but but that's not entirely bad. It kind of motivated me to do something that I've been wanting to do uh, for a long time now, which is make some tip videos for you guys because I originally started this channel just to make tips for you guys and help you guys improve as fishermen. And uh, with the boat, uh, I was always like, let's just go to the lake, let's go fishing, uh, you know, make the fun videos, the videos that everyone likes to make. It kind of got me away from making it my original goal, which was the tip videos for you guys. So what better thing to do than sit down with you guys and break down my top five winter pond baits. So every Wednesday from here on out, there's going to be a new tip video, something from uh, myself to give to you guys and kind of have that mutual relationship there. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the video. So obviously not all of us can get out to the big lakes and go fishing off a boat. Uh, not all of us have a boat like in my situation right now. So this video is mainly directed to those of you guys who are your maybe your weekend angler or just love to hit the ponds, okay? So pond fishing, as we all know, gets very, very difficult in the winter. It's really hard to have the motivation to go out there knowing that you're probably only gonna get a few bites. I mean, ponds are very pressured. Um, they're small, there's not a lot of structure for these fish to go to. And a lot of times in the winter they just completely shut off. But that does not mean that there cannot be fish to be caught. There's The fish are always biting. I don't care uh, what anybody says, the fish are always biting. They have to eat. They're cold-blooded, they have to keep themselves warm, they have to keep moving. But when you're, when you're fishing in the winter, whether that's at a big lake, a pond, uh, a river, you have to start thinking more like a bass. You can't go out in like the spring and just sight fish them or in the summer just throw any kind of shad looking or craw looking bait and know that they're gonna eat it. You really have to get into the mindset of what a bass would think. They're cold blooded like I said, so they're gonna be looking for warmer water and the water that they do find, they're not gonna be moving a whole lot in it. You know, the, all, the water temperature regulates the, the body temperature of the fish. So where that water temp, the water temp is gonna be the most important factor in winter fishing. That's where, that's where you're gonna find your fish. So some of you might not be able to relate to this, but I know my fellow Arizonians here will be able to. In the summer, when it gets up to, I'm speaking like 110, 115 degrees, and it's just like blistering hot, and that heat just kills you. It just makes you wanna stay inside and do absolutely nothing. Same thing for the bass. In the middle of the summer, they're really lethargic and they don't wanna move at all. They want an easy meal just like they do in the winter. At those two extremes, the fish really have to regulate the body temperature, and they move around to the the, white, the right water temps and the structure, and once they get there, they really become lethargic, and they don't move much, just like we would in the middle of the winter or in the middle of the summer when it's 110, 115 degrees. So you really have to give them a bait or a presentation that is e that they think is easy for them to conquer or to go get, that they can spend very little energy on. Now these baits that I've chosen, these are the ones that have been through and through for me, that have worked in ponds, lakes, that I've picked for the sole purpose of easy presentation, uh, very lifelike looking, because the water uh, the water in the winter definitely clears up. Um, so these, like I said, these are baits that I've battle tested. I've been out on the field, on the lakes, on the ponds, rivers, and I've tried them out and they've caught fish for me and that I have a lot of confidence in. So I will show you guys these right now. So I got a couple here on my little bench. Uh, that I'll show you guys and I'll kind of talk about them and break them down for you guys and how I like to throw them, where, what kind of presentation, you know, what the fish are thinking. That way you guys can uh, go and implement that at your pond. Alright, so the first bait that I'm going to start off today with is going to be 
the lipless crankbait. A lot of people think of this as like more of like a pre-spawn, post-spawn spring, pretty much all year round bait except for the winter. Uh, the reason why I like throwing these baits is they're pretty quick moving, they're really good at getting a reaction strike, and they have a really, really, really tight wobble to them. And that tight wobble is key to catching these winter fish. It looks like those shad, as it gets colder, they, they're their swim gets a lot tighter than it is in the summer where they're more loose, the water's warmer. Um, so it mimics those shad really good. And whenever you're ripping it up and down off the bottom, it's like they're you know, swimming to the top and then they're fluttering down to the bottom, kind of like the last, uh, I call it the, the death swim of the shad right before they're getting ready, to, getting ready to die. The shad really don't do good in cold water. So it mimics that really well, uh, as well as just triggering those reaction strikes. You guys can burn this along the bottom, especially in a pond where you can cover pretty much the whole pond throwing one of these guys and uh, trigger some good reaction strikes. Um, make sure that you guys keep good hooks on these like with your jerk baits or your crank baits. Keep good hooks on your crank baits because a lot of times in the winter uh, the fish will just swipe at it real quick and they'll just catch that last treble in the corner of the mouth so they're not really eating it uh, it's just all reaction strike but that's why I like uh, throwing a lipless crankbait in those uh, fall transition times or early winter to even uh, late winter patterns. Is these guys tight wobble, really good reaction strike baits. The next lure that I really enjoy throwing in the winter time is a flat sided crankbait and there is no better crankbait to throw uh, in the winter than a Strike King flat sided 1.5. These guys just give off a crazy unique action uh, with those flat sides and then that unique bill that just sticks straight out. Um, that's another big thing you want in a crankbait during the winter time is a crankbait that sticks straight out from the bait, not down like a square bill. It'll give it a much tighter action. It'll get down deeper for you. And the thing that really sets me off to this bait is it almost suspends it does when it hits a piece of cover it doesn't float to the top like your normal square bill or your deep diver uh, it has a very good talent for staying right there after it hits the rock and I think that triggers a lot of bites because it mimics that dying shad um, in the winter I like throwing baits that have a slow sink to them uh, just because when those shad are dying they're not rising to the top they are slowly sinking to the bottom and finding a crankbait that doesn't float or floats very little is very key to me. Another great wintertime crankbait is the good old fashioned, the classic, the DT6. Another really good bait. It's compact, not a very big bait. It gets down to six feet, it stays there. It's made of balsa wood, it's real light, very, very subtle tap in it. Um, so if you're fishing for those more finicky fish and more pressured fish, and you wanna go with something a little more finessey but still covering a lot of water, the DT6 is great for that. Um, like I said, it's made out of balsa wood, so the rattles that it does have in it, it's kind of deadened by the sound of the wood. Uh, I know they do make silent versions, so you just gotta let the fish kind of speak to you in that in that situation and just let them tell you uh, what you wanna throw. But another great wintertime uh, pond bait. Alright, so on to the next one. I think this is probably my favorite all-time lure. All-time lure to throw, whether it's, you know, hard conditions in the winter, pre-spawn, post-spawn, in the spring. I think this lure just shines all year round. For me, it co it can, I can cover a ton of water with it. I can still be pretty finesse with it, give the fish a different presentation. I can change it up. I'm not just burning it in. I'm not just leaving, dragging it on the ground. And that lure has definitely got to be the jerk bait. Now the Rapala Shadow Wrap, that's by far my my personal favorite uh, jerk bait. I just think it gives an action unlike any other jerk bait. This one here is the deep diving version. As you can see, it's got the longer bill. The shallower version has obviously a shorter bill. It's more of like a 45 degree angle. I've thrown this everywhere. I always have one of these guys tied on, but uh, in the ponds really, this is a very good bait because in ponds, you don't have a whole lot of forage. Some ponds might have shad in them, uh, but most have like little glass minnows or bluegill. And throwing a jerk bait in the winter, especially like a bigger profile like like this one here, can mimic a bluegill so well to catch those bigger fish. I mean, it can catch little fish, it can catch big fish, uh, but just the action of these jerk baits uh, and jerk baits in general, really, uh, can call a fish from quite a ways away, especially in the clear winter water. 
going with the more natural color like this where it's got a little bit of a chartreuse belly on there. Uh, it's got an orange head, but mostly silver and white. Um, you really want a natural color in clearer water. As it goes to more stained water, I'll go more with maybe like a darker color or a bone color. Uh, something I'll give a better silhouette in the water so the fish can see it, find it, a little bit more rattles. Um, but uh, that's one of the situations you just gotta let the fish tell you and speak with the fish a little bit, communicate with them, bro down with them, let them tell you what lure they want to eat. Uh, but in the clear winter water, natural colors, that's very important. Even though they're in the winter, if you get this within a range around them, they'll still make that little effort to come hit these baits just because it looks like that dying shad. It looks like an easy meal. It's something they can go get with very little energy. Most of the time, they're going to hit it on the pause. They're not going to hit it while it's moving. So they might be slowly following it. You're twitching along, maybe a one, two, couple second pop. And then as soon as it stops and you're about to make that other twitch, they're gonna hit it. And you're just gonna twitch it and you're gonna set it right into them. You're gonna, as soon as you twitch it, they're gonna be there. Really cadence is big with these. I don't really believe in like minute pauses. You know, the most that I'll pause a jerk bait in the winter is maybe five to 10 seconds. I'll give it maybe a one, two, pause it for two, three, four seconds pop it again maybe once three times twice change up the cadence you really want to get into a pattern and the cadence and where you're throwing with these guys um, I like to throw these guys around rocks uh, I'll throw it and I'll dig it on the bottom I don't I don't mind getting these jerk baits wrapped up in some stuff and having to rip it out or reflecting it off rocks a lot of guys think you just got to throw it as is suspending lure uh, which these do very well especially the shadow wraps they have a very slow sink which is like I said before, a very big key to me. I like to work it similar to a crankbait. I'll rip it along the bottom, make sure that that bill's hitting rocks and hitting the bottom, gravel, whatever they're holding onto. I really make a commotion, get in front of the fish's face, but still make it look like an easy meal for them, like a dying shad. Um, this one, the Rapala is really, is probably my favorite one, but also the uh, Vision 110 by Mega Bass. This one's also a very great, uh, suspending jerk bait. The Vision 110 has probably been a huge favorite of anglers across the country. Uh, it's very well known. Uh, so jerk baits in the winter is a definite yes. Yeah, so you have to have one of those tied on. All right, so four of the five lures now. Uh, it's gonna have to be a jig. And with my jigs, I don't like big bulky jigs. Just in general, I'm not a, like a big jig guy. The jigs I do throw are gonna be real finesse jigs. As you can see, there's this guy here that I've just kind of modified. I actually did a terrible job on this one. Um, but to modify these jigs, you just split the skirt in two where the, the rubber ring is. And then I like to trim the front ones a little bit. Probably about the same length as the weed guard, a little bit shorter. Um, light wire hook on these guys. They're not very heavy, light wire hook, light weed guard and a small trailer. That's how I like to throw uh, my jigs. In these Arizona lakes, it's real rocky, so real lightweight jigs is how I like to go, especially in the winter. But you really wanna match the craws in the winter, uh, otherwise the fish are not gonna be convinced. They're gonna look around, and they're gonna see how the other craws are acting, and then see how your jig is acting. And if it's not the same, uh, you're just wetting your line. So matching the, matching the color of the craws is very important, and matching the size as well. If you guys ever find some on the bank, definitely take note of it. If you don't have the trailer or the jig, go go to your nearest store, your, your tackle store, and get that color. Because that's the color they're going to be in the winter, and they do vary colors everywhere you go. Any lake you go to, they're going to be a little bit differently. A little different size color, um, so that's real important. As far as the trailers go, a Zoom Speed Craw or like a small beaver bait is probably my favorite uh, favorite trailers to go with. But working it really slow, bouncing it off the rocks, just crawling it. I'm not going to be moving this bait very quickly. Just something to get it in their face. Uh, when this is on the ground and it's standing up, those fish are going to be right behind it, just nosing it, just watching it. And they're, what they're doing is they're determining if it's worthy of them to eat, to waste their time on, if it's going to be a good meal, or if it's even realistic looking. Uh, so really matching that craw hatch and giving that right presentation is key with the jigs. Uh, this one here is kind of like that green watermelon color. But black and blue is also a favorite of mine. And it seems like nowhere, no matter where I go or what conditions I'm throwing it in, black and blue uh, tends to shine. Here's that little beaver bait you guys can see there. That's what I really like to throw is those finesse, those finesse jigs. I really don't like throwing the big bulky uh, football jigs or flipping jigs or stuff like that. Finesse jigs are the way to go for me, in my opinion. And I think those are the most effective jigs in, you know, in the wintertime or in ponds. It's just a slow-moving, small-profile jig. 
All right, so without further ado, the last lure on the list. All right, guys, and so last but certainly not least, uh, my fifth winter pond bait is going to be the drop shot. Now anyone who is very involved in fishing or has been fishing for a while probably knows what the drop shot is. For those of you guys who don't, this is all it is. It's just a little hook. You got a leader down to a weight there and it just sits up off the bottom like this. It is an insanely effective technique. You guys know you can throw it all year round and catch fish on it, but this bait really shines whenever the conditions get tough. When the fish are just real lethargic and they're not biting, usually you can get them to bite with just this little drop shot worm here and especially in the winter a drop shot does really 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 well especially in the ponds where the fish are pressured they've seen just about everything even though a lot of people are throwing drop shots just that presentation is what gets the bite so in the winter in the ponds a drop shot uh, is very very effective and it'll get you lots of bites all you're going to do with this guy is you're going to cast it out there or drop it straight down if you're on a boat uh, in a pond you're going to cast it to wherever you think the fish are going to be and you're just gonna take it along the bottom. You're just gonna twitch along the bottom, much like a, a small jig or a Texas rig. Uh, maybe drag it if the fish aren't necessarily hitting the pops. You just let them talk to you there, and then you just and then you just feel the bite again. Feel what you're feeling before you get the bite. If it's rocks, it's gravel, sand, grass. Pay attention to what uh, what kind of structure you're feeling before you get the bite, because that'll tell you a lot about where the fish are and what they're relating to and their habits during that winter time. Um, as far as like the leader length goes on uh, the drop shots. In a pond, I really, I don't really like to have them too long. Uh, most of the time the fish are right near the bottom anyway. So like this one where it's maybe a six to seven inch leader right there is perfect. Uh, maybe even shorter um, and clear, clear lakes and like clear water. You can go a longer leader up to a you know, foot, two feet long. Uh, murky water, I keep it real short, compact to the bottom because in murky water, um, the fish don't like to roam around in open water. They like to stick to what they can feel around them. Uh, I, I watched a video once and he, he did a perfect job of explaining this. He said, imagine that you're in a dark room and you can't feel anything. You're not going to just walk around the room. You're going to find a wall and you're going to stick to it because that's what you can feel and you can kind of relate to yourself and where you are in the room. Same thing with these bass. They're not going to go way out deep in murky water. They're going to stay close to the structure. Uh, probably up shallow and they're going to stick right there even though it's cold uh, just because they know where they're at. So in that situation you can go with the smaller drop shot leader. Uh, clearer water you can go with the longer one. It just depends on, on what how the fish are feeling. Uh, like I said in ponds I like to keep it a little bit shorter. Six to eight inches is good for me. Uh, that's generally the length that I use anywhere I go. And as far as what to throw on a drop shot, uh, right here I got a little KVD dream shot. Uh, but you can really throw anything. You can throw a worm, you can throw like a fluke style bait, uh, you can throw a cross, some people, I'm sure you could throw like a goby up north. Um, I really like to stick more towards the worms. Uh, this is more like a worm bait fish imitating style. Uh, I like the worms. Occasionally I'll throw a small little fluke on there if they're really keyed in on shad. But really there's no limits on what you can throw on a drop shot. No one's really saying what you can and can't throw on a on a drop shot, it's just so versatile. You can get different weights thrown in the grass, around rocks, um, different leaders, like I said, different times of year. It's just a great overall presentation and style of fishing. All right, guys, so that is my five winter pond baits. Uh, I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope uh, if you do try some of these techniques that I was saying and you go get to these ponds if they catch fish, uh, they certainly work for me. Um, if you guys have any questions about anything, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll get to any and every comment that I can. Um, and of course, guys, remember to hit that sub button, tap that little bell if you want to get some more notifications and keep updated with the videos that I'm posting. Uh, all the support is much appreciated, guys. It goes a long way. And remember to just get out there and fish, guys. The best way to become a better fisherman is just to be out on the water. So I hope these techniques help you guys out. And I'll, every Wednesday, guys, I'll be posting these videos. They'll be packed from anything uh, from tying a knot to skipping jigs and stuff more complicated like that. And remember to get out there and fish anytime you guys can. So I'll see you guys in the next video.